is just fantastic. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. On this channel there is a playlist, a fairly lengthy playlist concerning one individual by the name of Shamima Begum. There are within that playlist 17 videos. Now I know that means I've covered this person 17 times, that's far too many, that's obsessive Omega. I make 5 videos a week and those 17 videos stretch back 5 years, so I haven't really covered her all that much. The most recent video was titled Shamima Denai. It is from 11 months ago. Shamima's story is one that can be considered by some to be tragic, others to be justified. It depends on your interpretation of the information that is available. I will link that playlist down below if you are at all interested in watching those videos. Since being stuck in Syria for a number of years now, Shamima has done her best, a damnedest, to try and get back to the United Kingdom. She has over the years employed a number of differing personality traits and tactics, or traits that are personality tactics, that, that's the wrong way around, to try and get back to the United Kingdom. It can be seen as such by many, which is why some will undoubtedly roll their eyes. Every single time that she has tried to do this, it has failed. It has failed for a whole number of differing reasons. But the one consistent perspective over the years is that Shamima being allowed back into the United Kingdom represents a security risk, not just to the British people, but also to the security services and herself, of course. If permitted back into the United Kingdom, the political argument is that they would have to spend quite a bit of money keeping her hidden. But since she's been quite happy to put herself front and centre whenever opportunity presented itself, which has led to some of her allies no longer allying with her, covered in that playlist by the way journalists who believe she should be allowed back in the United Kingdom no longer believing that, there is much in the way of belief credence lent to the idea that perhaps she is doing this knowing that she'll get more attention and will use it, which means more money would have to be spent to keep her, air quotes, safe. At the same time, there is a political game in this as well. If politicians let her back in when she represents something truly bad, then the counter is they are willing to allow what is dubbed an extremist into the country. There is optics involved. Shamima's involvement with the morality police, or allegedly involved with the morality police, has done her no favours here. So all appeals to date have fallen on deaf ears. But there are many levels to appeals. And because of that, Shamima is happy to continue to use them for as long as she can try to get back to the United Kingdom, which is her end goal. Shamima is married to a man who is Dutch and is currently serving his prison sentence in Syria as well. So others do regularly point out that perhaps she could go there instead. That is a separate issue for them to resolve at a later date. I don't actually know if he can go back to Holland or the Netherlands either. In the case of Shamima, I won't deny, part of me has softened a little bit upon knowing the full context. However, I still do not believe she should be allowed back into the United Kingdom, and I will fully support her citizenship not being reinstated. The full context involve some people involved within the Canadian security services, Shamima being, along with two of her friends that left this country with others' passports, being groomed, which does raise a number of questions concerning the topic of indoctrination and religion. That is a very complicated discussion, a subject which I am not well versed in. Owing to that, the political game, the whole field gets very muddy very fast and becomes what is considered nuanced. My blunt interpretation does not help the situation and would only offer opportunity for others to simply pounce on a distracting topic rather than the wider issue that should be addressed. We're going to circle back to that later because the wider topic is where people usually go on social media and in the wider, more casual landscape of the oikery, because it is quite common for a false equivalence to be made. In this, we are going to focus on Shamima and her more recent appeal. I noticed this morning she was trending on Twitter. There are other trends that I noticed, and of course, I am very interested in, but Shamima is the one I would like to focus on. The reason why is because Shamima's most recent and arguably final appeal available to her in this country was happening. And I didn't know this. I wasn't paying enough attention. I'm very excited about this. So I'm going to read some tweets from earlier today before the appeal was publicly known and or announced, whichever you prefer. We have that, by the way, the full document linked in the pinned comment with all sources for today's video. Martin Daubner. Shamima Begum to return. 
Today, the Court of Appeal decides on whether Shamima Begum can return to the United Kingdom. This case used to have huge significance. Now, the UK has fallen to Islamists within. The police won't police, the mob dictate parliament, Begum would get an OBE these days. Reply, do we have to debate this every six months? Who is paying for her many appeals? She is a traitor and we need to revoke citizenship of many more who are traitors to this country. She was a strict enforcer and she wasn't groomed. Her dad is involved with all the Islamic terror appeasers in London like Abu Hamza. She and her family are very much supporters of extremism. They should all be deported. I saw a poll from Active Patriot. Not another boring poll, you say? Will Shumima Begum win her appeal against citizenship removal at the Court of Appeal today? At time of recording, no was in the lead, but there is an increasing number of people who don't know who she is, and that is quite all right. David Paulden Esquire. I say Shamima Begum isn't welcome in the United Kingdom, who will say the same? Reply, you are forgetting the part where she was groomed and smuggled out to Daesh by the Canadian Security Intelligence Services, the UK's supposed ally, included a Guardian article confirming that, should there be any blame, it should be directed at Canada first and foremost. One must also ask, why did they smuggle her out? It would appear that Western nations benefiting from the deployment of terrorist proxies to destabilize West Asia and perhaps installing their own dictators loyal to Western imperialist foreign policy objectives at the expense of the will of citizens in these very Western nations. I'm not going to lie, part of me wants to wear a tinfoil hat just because. It feels right when you hear so many very buzzy words. The connection to the Canadian secret services is Mohammed Al Rashed was an informant for the Canadian intelligence who told the Met Police of their connection with him in March 2015, a few days after Shamima, Khadiza and Amira had crossed the border to join ISIS. But for the longest time, neither the British nor the Canadians were willing to acknowledge this as truth. In fact, it took them years to agree that that did in fact happen. So over on Twitter, Laura Hertzman had tweeted at me at half past 10 on the 23rd of February 2024, a BBC tweet. Shmima Begum loses appeal against removal of British citizenship after she went to Syria at 15 to join Islamic State group. Accompanying that is an article, but it's actually a live feed. The hearing itself was hosted by Dame Sue Carr, Lady Chief Justice. She went through the events surrounding Shamima Begum leaving the United Kingdom. Dame Sue Carr outlined the case as to why the Home Secretary at the time, Sajid Javid, felt the need to strip Shamima of her citizenship, noting the challenge Shamima lost at the Special Immigration Appeals Commission in 2023. And this is the role of the Court of Appeal to see if the judgment was lawful. At 10.21, it was announced that the Court of Appeal ruled that Shamima was lawfully deprived of her citizenship. The ruling means she remains in Syria with no chance of return to the United Kingdom. Now there is some speculation she'll take this to the Supreme Court. Because it's a unanimous vote, that's not going to go anywhere, I can promise you that. So the only option left is the European Court of Human Rights. However, I should point out, they only ever get involved under very, very specific circumstances it is believed by many an expert, correspondents and analysts that this would be unlikely to fall within the bracket of what the European Court of Human Rights would get involved in. In her ruling, Chief Justice said it could be argued the decision in Begum's case is harsh, and it could be argued Begum is the author of her own misfortune, but it is not for this court to agree or disagree with either point of view. Our only task is to assess whether the deprivation decision was unlawful. We have concluded it was not, and the appeal is dismissed. Dominic Cassiani has said there are two critical questions in Begum's case. Was she a victim of trafficking and exploitation? And secondly, is the sunglasses-wearing young mother who lost all three of her children a threat to the nation? The Court of Appeal judgment says that the Home Secretary was entitled to reach the decision that she was dangerous, even if there had been evidence of trafficking. If that evidence existed, it concerned events four years before she was, as an adult, assessed for intent. The upshot is that James Cleverly, the current Home Secretary, has dodged a potentially massive legal crisis in the court, finding he has to balance a national security consideration with questions of whether someone is a victim. This may not be the end of it though. It seems very likely Begum's side will ask the Supreme Court to get involved. I can say this now, they'll throw it out. If they try and argue against the Court of Appeals, based on whether or not the 2023 judgment was lawful or not, they will lose. If they argue based on trafficking, 
There is a slim possibility this could actually go to the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court will throw it out. They will dismiss it. The executive director of Reprieve, a legal action non-governmental organization that represents Shamima, Maya Foa, the individual, says that her team are not lawyers for Begum, but I'm sure she'll be informed and I'm sure she'll be disappointed, but we'll know this won't be the end of the line as I'm assuming there will be an appeal to the appeal. The three judges wholly dismissed all the arguments for appeal. That included Baroness Sue Carr, who was the Lady Chief Justice, who said it was not for the court to conclude whether Shamima had been treated harshly or the author of her own misfortune, but to apply the law. The other two judges agreed and said that the Home Secretary had been entitled to put national security before concerns that she had been the victim of exploitation and trafficking. Quote, may well have been influenced and manipulated by others, but still have made a calculated decision to travel to Syria and align with Islamic State. Voluntariness of travel was not a binary question, and she may well have been influenced and manipulated by others, but still have made a calculated decision to travel to Syria and align. The assessment of the national security risk was a question in the evaluation and judgment entrusted by Parliament to the Secretary of State. Gareth Pierce and Daniel Ferner, her solicitors, said they would consider the judgment, but Pierce made it clear she believed the case was now beyond the law itself. As many point out, other nations, the UK as well, have brought back citizens from Syrian war zone in an attempt to make the region safer and to rehabilitate them. Shamima appears to be a black sheep in this one. Both solicitors for Shamima though do believe that the United Kingdom is under a moral duty to do the same, to bring her back, to help stabilize Syria and to rehabilitate her. A spokesperson for the Home Office said, we are pleased that the Court of Appeal has found in favor of our position in this case. Our priority remains maintaining the safety and security of the United Kingdom, and we will robustly defend any decision made in doing so. Just so you know how her legal team tried to attack this, they had five points. One, they argued the Home Secretary failed to consider whether Begum was a victim of trafficking. Two, it was further argued the concern over whether Begum was a victim of trafficking should have been considered by the Home Secretary when deciding whether depriving her of citizenship was in the public good and proportionate. 3. Begum's legal team argued that the then Home Secretary failed to consider that she was the de facto stateless, meaning that although she had claimed to Bangladeshi citizenship, authorities there would have never let her settle there, so it was basically useless. 4. She was not given procedural fairness because she didn't get to put her argument forward as to why she should keep her citizenship, and five, Begum's lawyers argued the Home Secretary breached the public sector equality duty. The point of the PSED is to make sure that the public authorities and organizations carrying out public functions think about how they can improve society and promote equality in every aspect of their day-to-day -day business. This includes decision-making, internal and external policies, procuring goods and services, the services they provide, recruitment, promotion, and performance management of employees. Earlier in the video, I mentioned false equivalences are quite commonly used. For example, you have individuals going all the way to Israel to defend the country. Guna retweeting somebody in Bar Cohen pointed this out by saying, if Shamima is banned from returning to England, so should she. Someone pointing out that this is Adi Kasuto. Apparently, people have been going through her social media and she's been leaving really radicalized comments all over the place on other people's posts. Shamima was a child, was groomed into sex trafficking by being married off as a child bride. Meanwhile, Adi is a damn adult fighting for an army being charged with genocide and war crimes. Adi is on par with an ISIS fighter. I hope at the very least we can get her blacklisted from jobs. Earlier I mentioned nuance, gray area. Yes, this is one of those. Politics and optics become very um, focal in this. In the same sense, many have gone to Ukraine as well to fight Russia. It's quite divisive. Again, it's a false equivalence to compare that to Israel and Hamas. It's a false equivalence to compare that to Shamima joining ISIS and becoming part of the morality police and living in her utopia. Continuing with other responses though. Shamima Begum's mistake was marrying an ISIS soldier and not an IDF soldier. She married into the wrong army. If only she had the foresight at 15, she'd be back in the UK now with passport unrevoked and British citizenship intact. She's the wrong race with the wrong faith who married the wrong terrorist. What a silly girl, somebody somewhere is taking notes. James Treadwell. Shamima should be allowed her citizenship, not because she was a child, not because she was duped by men or vulnerability or any other spurious justification for her abhorrent views and behavior, but because we should bring her back and lock her up our problem. Under what charge? There are some charges that she could face. Pick one. 
because if you're going to make this kind of statement on Twitter, you need to be very specific because the internet will pounce on you. Dr. Jessica Taylor. Shamima being stripped of her citizenship when she was groomed at 15 by adult men, that word, married, and ABUSED is one of the most appalling decisions I've ever seen. And I want to draw your attention to a parallel. The judge started today. It could also be argued that Miss Begum is the author of her own misfortune. In 2013, the exact same words were said about teenage girls being exploited and ABUSED in Rotherham, Rochdale and Oxford. The words used were these girls were the authors of their own downfall. This is the bullying of a victim of child grooming, trafficking and radicalization and our government should be ashamed of what we have done to her. Shan. Yo, Rishi Sunak and the House of Commons. If Shamima isn't allowed back in the UK because aged 15 she was groomed and trafficked out of the UK, then you better not think about letting UK terrorists who've flown to Israel to help slaughter Palestinians set foot back on, well, British soil. See the false equivalence thing again? Yeah. The Times Radio put out a part of their show talking about the government breathing a sigh of relief and how it would all be a PR disaster for the government during election season. I don't consider that a worthwhile thing to discuss here because quite frankly I don't care about the optics. Adrian Short had replied to them by saying, the UK citizenship law is fundamentally unjust. It creates two classes of citizens, those who cannot be deprived of citizenship and those who can. The latter are people who have or are nationally entitled to another citizenship, whether or not they have it or can get it. Among that second class of inferior British citizens are all British Jews who are entitled to Israeli citizenship by virtue of being Jewish. This applies whether or not they have Israeli citizenship or want it, or even whether Israel wants to grant it. I should point out, citizenship is a word charitably used in this country. That's not what anyone actually is. You are not a British citizen. If you're English anyway, you are a subject to the crown. You are not a citizen. And I feel like it's a very pedantic thing to point out, but I'm going to point it out because apparently I'm a subject to the crown. These are the more leaning towards the side of letting Shamima back opinions. I want them laid out so you can understand what the opposing opinion is or belief is and how over five years these opinions have grown in strength. But the government has not moved on this and it is unlikely to. Even if they lost in the general election this year and Labour take over, which is highly likely, Labour won't repatriate Shamima. They know when it comes to politics that would be career suicide. As with every time we've covered this before, I would love to know what you think. Please let me know in the comments down below. As a final thing, streaming on Twitch later, politics stream also on Moisky Live. Hope to see you all there.